Hey gamers, it's G from The Corner, and today we are finally here to review Pikmin 4 on the Nintendo Switch family of systems. It's been quite the journey. I've gone over my history of the series at length during Pikmin Week, and a bit of the history of the series itself. But yes, after 10 long years and 8 years of teases from Mr. Miyamoto himself, Pikmin 4 is finally here on the Nintendo Switch for everybody to enjoy. And let me just say, I am enjoying the game quite a bit. It's not without its flaws, but it is, it is a very, very good entry into this series. All right, and right here, right now, I think we should delay things no further. Let's see, after 10 months of hype through trailers and all this revisiting of the Pikmin series, is it the comeback? Is it the comeback of the Pikmin series that we have been waiting for? Let's find out. Pikmin 4's plot is kind of the usual. Olimar crash lands on the Pikmin planet, but this time he isn't able to escape on his own, requesting the help of the rescue corpse, who also crash land, leaving the Avatar character a new recruit to save the day. And yes, I did say an Avatar character. You actually get to customize your own captain this time around, which is pretty unique. Usually we're given a character, whether it's Olimar, Louis, or the Copites, to play as, and they you know have their own personalities, their own backstories, and goals, wants, and needs. But it's kind of neat being able to make your own captain from scratch this time. I mean, not... From scratch, I mean, look, there's a lot of customization options they give you. You have four different body types and different facial features, different hair colors, outfit colors. It's great. I made my little dude just a just a short little guy, kind of like Olimar, but you know he's a bit emo and edgy. I don't, I don't know. This 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 character he speaks to me, and this is who I am in the Pikmin universe. Uh, one other thing about the plot, I don't want to talk too much about it for spoiler reasons, but. It seems to retcon the rest of the series. It's odd, right? Some things imply that, yes, this is Olimar's, you know, fourth time coming back to the planet, Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and 4, maybe even Hey Pikmin if you want to throw that in there as well. But then there are references that make it seem like this is his first time, where they'll talk about certain things that happen in Pikmin 2 and certain things that happen in Pikmin 3 as if they haven't happened yet. There's even, well, a little bit of spoilers, there's some characters later on that are very similar to the protagonists from Pikmin 3, even looking pretty much exactly like them, but they are not for whatever reason. So, yeah, I'm not sure if these events are yet to come, if they've already happened. In any way, it kind of works as like a bit of marketing. You know, you could kind of say that, oh, these things are going to happen in the other games, and if you, you know, buy them on the Nintendo Switch eShop, you'll be able to find out, which is kind of smart. And honestly, the plot's not like convoluted or annoying because it's if it does take place before all the other games anyway i i kind of am starting to doubt it does the more i've played of it um but you know i think it's it's a fun little plot that that moves the game along and it's a good excuse for all of the gimmicks and things in the game itself now onto the gameplay, things have changed quite drastically, especially in comparison to the last three entries in the series. Instead of controlling multiple captains, you only control your avatar character and a dog-like companion named Ochi. He is an adorable little guy who can and can't do some of the things the captain can do. The captain can charge Pikmin at enemies, meanwhile Ochi can only do that by revving himself up, and which requires a bit of time, and such and such. However, Ochi also has his own set of upgrades and a sort of, not really skill tree, just kind of enhancements that you can unlock as you progress through the game. And they kind of turn Ochi into essentially a really buff Pikmin that you can control. In a way, I kind of joke to myself looking through some of these upgrades, realizing, man, you can just turn Pikmin into an action hack and slash if you wanted to, where you just run around as a dog man all day, every day, collecting treasures and items and such and such. In all honesty, I kind of like the different direction. I can tell it was done mostly for accessibility, to make the game more accessible to newcomers. Obviously, Pikmin isn't a super well-doing series. No wonder it takes 10 years to get a new installment. I mean, obvious. Um, but the team has even gone on record saying that this is the most approachable Pikmin title to date, and honestly, if this doesn't sell well, they don't really know how else to make the series appeal to more audiences. But I can definitely tell that they have done a lot here this is the easiest Pikmin game by a landslide. I was barely losing Pikmin in the first few days, which is kind of crazy considering how hard I would call the other two games, the other three games in the series in these the prior videos. This game 
honestly might be as easy as like a 3D Mario, maybe even a Kirby game, I would go as far as to say. At the start of the game, you aren't even allowed to manage 100 Pikmin at once, so they kind of limit how much, you, you can't really get overwhelmed, right? You also can only take out three types of Pikmin, greatly decreasing the amount of, you know, management you have to do. Another thing is there is no game limit, just like in Pikmin 2. There's no ship parts need to be collected in 30 days. There's no, you need to keep getting fruit to replenish your health. It's just you explore as long as you want. There's no stress about going back. Enemies also don't respawn in the overworld. If you kill an enemy, bring it back to your onion, come back the next day there, that enemy will not be there, which yes, does make item movement easier. You can now just bring items to the onions um, without having to worry about Pikmin getting stopped by enemies. But, you know, it might make the areas feel a bit empty if you're revisiting them. Granted, granted, I completed most of the areas before I even got close to this point, if I'm being honest. Actually, on my first run through the game, like, not even trying to collect stuff on the side, just, like, playing the game normally, I got 99% done the fourth area before I even advanced to the fifth area. I understand making the game more approachable, to newcomers. They obviously want the series to sell better, but you do run the risk of alienating what few fans the series has. In my honest opinion, I think a difficulty select would have been highly beneficial to these big changes. You know, enemy respawning, that could have just been a toggle, right? Difficulty selects could have done wonders to make the game a Pikmin experience for literally everyone, but instead you just have a pretty easy game. Now granted, I understand that even putting the difficulty selects in there, there's kind of always been this sort of underground pressure of, oh, I gotta play on the harder difficulty or the regular difficulty because I don't want to look like a little wuss. I really do see that online. I swear there totally would have been dozens if not hundreds of people on Twitter being like, oh, I selected the real difficulty, but Pikmin is too unfair, even though the easy option is right there, but just because, you know, that's the, hey, they're advertised as, hey, this is the difficulty for people who know how to play Pikmin, this is the difficulty for newcomers, they're gonna pick the difficulty that doesn't talk down to them in their sense, you know? It's kind of, I get what they want to do, they want to make people understand that this is Pikmin and they're allowed to play it like this, but I don't know. I mean, look, it's not the end of the world. I still thought it was phenomenal. I don't mind crazy easy games. Like I said, a big Kirby fan, right? And those games are not very challenging at all. And there are some challenges that do come later on in the game. I'll get into a few of those later. The biggest change I have yet to mention is the increased camera control. In past games, you really only had that bird's eye isometric view of the areas, but now you can like pan the camera to an over the shoulder view almost. Like seriously, there is so much more depth to the areas. There can be structures that you'll crawl under. Certain objects will now tower above the environment. For example, one of the beautiful areas in the game has this sand castle, and, you know, it's just so... It feels like you're really trekking a mountain in a Pikmin series, which is something I never... I never really thought of them doing because of how the games are usually, you know, structured, but... I don't know, it's weird, right? Because even if I'll play the game in the more traditional camera angle, because you can pretty much pull it right back up to that, it still feels like there's more depth to everything, which is just amazing, right? It's just something that instantaneously, you look at footage of this game and Pikmin 3, you can tell, okay, this game is clearly the far more advanced game in the series. And it's, it's phenomenal, honestly. I think that everything looks amazing in this game. Some other new additions I'll briefly mention are the Ice and Glow Pikmin. You know, every game has a new type. It seems like two types kind of is the norm. The Ice Pikmin, they can freeze enemies, basically acting as the super bitter spray from uh, Pikmin 2, where they'll be frozen for a brief period of time after you throw enough of them on an enemy, and then if you kill the enemy in that state, they will drop nectar instead of the carcass, making a sort of not really risk reward. I guess like you want an easy way out, you're not gonna get this, right? You know, maybe you'll wanna like ice him up, deplete most of the health, but then like just get rid of everybody until he thaws out and then kill the enemy with the um, the regular Pikmin. So you actually get the body. They also can freeze bodies of water, allowing, you know, the captain, Ochi, and any Pikmin to walk on top of the water. Although Ochi eventually will learn how to swim and every Pikmin can kind of ride on his back making things. There's, there's a lot Ochi can do, man. I keep forgetting about all the upgrades. There's some crazy, crazy stuff they give him later in the game. He can, like, attack enemies and, like, jump at them. You'd think they wouldn't be able to attack flying enemies, but nope, he, he can. The other new type of Pikmin are the Glow Pikmin, but they are exclusive to the night modes and the caves in the game. Um, they are essentially, they're kind of the bold men, actually. They're impervious to everything, and 
That's about all. And they also can, if you uh, do the charge, but you hold down the charge button, they will instead all fire as like an orb instead of um, instead of just like charging as little Pikmin. It's pretty cool. Um, honestly, kind of a nice improvement on the Bulbman. I really don't see how they could bring the Bulbman back in DLC or something after the Glow Pikmin have been introduced. You get Glow Seeds as you play the nighttime expeditions that they are found in, and you can pull those out in the caves if you just need, you know, some extra Pikmin to beef up your army, or, you know, some Pikmin that you need to, you want to turn into other Pikmin with those, uh, flowers that are still in the game, just like in 2 and 3. Once again, you are collecting treasures, just like in Pikmin 2, which, while required to progress the story, are never treated as the main goal. It's kind of a means to an end. You take them and use them as fuel to expand where your ship can go. There's always a main quest that you are expected to follow with a few small treasure roadblocks. I often had enough treasure whenever one of these would show up, like it was Mario Galaxy. But in my opinion, this is an improvement from Pikmin 3. I really never had any motivation to collect fruits in Pikmin 3, aside from, like, you know, whenever... I'd see one, and I'd get it, right? I'd never think oh, there's a fruit there, I should go get that. Because, you know, it was just... I just was getting it to increase the amount of days I had. They're, they're sure you get a better ending, but the better ending is literally just different text from the announcer in the credits, you know? Um, and also, there was, like, never really much collectability to the fruit. There were only a few types of fruit, and they just sprinkled them in every single level. Meanwhile, the ship parts were all different, the treasures in 2 were all different, and while there are some similar treasures to one another in 3, each treasure is unique and does have its own entry in the Piclopedia. There's a lot of places to look for treasures, whether on the surface or, yes, the returning caves from Pikmin 2, which I am very happy about. They're, the surface areas have a lot going on in them, yes, like in 1 and 3, but there are still those caves for that dungeon-like experience that Pikmin 3 was really missing. The caves this time are thankfully not procedurally generated, at least I think so. They all felt pretty well designed, honestly and mostly had pretty solid gimmicks. A lot of it is in service to calling back to 2, however. There are a lot of themes that I feel like it's just, hey, this is just Pikmin 2 again, right? You have a lot of the same themes and a lot of the same bosses from 2, but thankfully there are a lot of them, and there are also quite a few original bosses and original themes. There was this really nice garden theme, there's an aquarium theme later on. There's, the, the, the caves are great, honestly. The treasures, it, it really just feels like Pikmin 2 again treasures, bosses, and such as... There's even bosses on the overworld, actually. There's, like, one I remember specifically from the Sandcastle area, and then the Armor Beetle from Pikmin 1 makes a return in the fourth area of the game. Like prior Pikmin games, there are a plethora of side modes and side content. However, it's done a bit differently than before. Instead of separate mission modes, everything is contained within the game, which kind of 50-50 on it. A lot of other games I've seen try something like this. Kirby games, you know, tend to have, like, external sub-games, but in Forgotten Land, everything was compressed into the hub world. And, you know, while in that game it's kind of fine because the sub-games were never anything major, I really like the battle and mission modes in Pikmin, and having them in the main game is... Kind of a double-edged sword. The challenge modes, now you just find them in the overworld, and they're just kind of one-floor caves that you go in. Three had all those unique maps that had a lot of interesting things going on, where fours are kind of just more cave floors, and, yeah, well, cave floors where you're given a set number of Pikmin and a set time limit. You can revisit these in the hub, and there's even some bonus ones to unlock way, way later into the game, but I don't know. It's, it's all right. I, I kind of prefer the old mission style, especially since there is no co-op this time, but whatever, it's fine. There's also NPCs in the hub world that will give you side quests to do. This is a brand new thing. So you will, you know, have to go find the rescue crew and Olimar, but also apparently a lot of other castaways have been stranded on this planet. I think they were all searching Olimar signal, although some people give conflicting store reports as you talk to them in this game, but I love the castaways. Pikmin games usually only have a handful of human characters, just you know, the captains you can play as, maybe one or two side characters, but having all these little guys that you find that you get to talk to and they'll all tell you stuff about them, like there's one that's like a streamer, there's one that's a teacher and she'll want you to find her students who are also like space guys, it's amazing, right? And they're all made within the character editor, so you know, you might find one that kind of looks like your guy, but for the most part they all look very original. It's amazing. And there are some other side modes you might find in the hub world. Uh, I'm not going to mention too many, I don't want to get into spoilers, but one that they've shown heavily in the trailers are the night expeditions, where 
Basically, you'll spend a day, instead of just exploring an area, you'll be in a, a condensed version of the area that'll have these, like, little hubs that you'll have to defend by gathering little star bits to spawn glow Pikmin and defeat, um, enemies. This helps cure some of the castaways who've been infe infected with this leaf-like disease, so there's always reason to play it. They will make you play some for the story mode. Um, it's pretty fun. This is where the glow Pikmin usually come to shine. They're not very long, but I, I enjoyed the ones I've played so far, honestly. And, you know, them making you do it, it's pretty... I, th I think it has its place in the game, honestly, and I like them quite a bit. I think I might go play some more after I'm done recording these on it, this review, honestly. Um, but there's a few other modes aside from that. I'm not going to get too into them. I don't want to spoiler the game, but there's, there's some neat surprises you're going to find in the hub world later on. However, if I had to get really pissed about this game... There is one area where I think they floundered harder than any other. The Dandori Battles. Okay, Pikmin Battle Modes, I absolutely love. I think they're super, super fun. Pikmin 2's Marble Battle Mode, where you have to kind of collect a certain amount of marbles. Pikmin 3's Bingo Battle. And I was pretty excited for Dandori Battle because, you know, on premise, right? The premise of it is that it's just competitive Pikmin. You just... Pikmin, who can Pikmin better? That's it. There's going to be some that'll have like bonuses, like, oh, you want to get this item right now because it's got a bonus going on. But aside from that, it's really just collect all the stuff where, in, you know, it's nice in comparison to Pikmin 2 and 3 where you were had to, you had to focus on set things. It really feels like you can go crazy just like getting as much as possible. Um, the characters keep spewing about Dandori, which I think means to strategize. It, it, Miyamoto explained it in one of the recs or something. Um, it's supposedly, I think it's kind of newcomer bait. It's kind of to be like, this is a thing you need to know if you want to like Pikmin, which, you know, whatever. It's, it's cute. I like it. Um, like I said, conceptually, it's amazing. The issue, the real issue here, right, is the map selection. There's only two, two distinct themes for any of the maps and six maps in total, as opposed to the 12 and 10 found in the previous games, and those all had unique themes. Really, it's just that toy box theme and the, um, like the beach theme. That's it. And I mean, the maps are honestly pretty fun and enjoyable, but I wish they were more visually distinct and I wish there was more of them. Genuinely, if they do an update, paid or free, this could become the best game in the Pikmin series. The battle mode is a ton of fun. There's even like, you know, you obviously have the modifiers, right? You could have like, you know, determine how many Pikmin you start with, but now you could also determine what stats Ochi is because you have him along and which Pikmin you use. That was never a thing before. You would always, maybe some maps would have like certain Pikmin you could pick up in, uh, in three. But now it's like you could be like, hey, I want to do a battle with somebody with wing Pikmin or rock Pikmin or purple or white because everybody's, they're all here. It's its so cool. It's its amazing. There's still the great power-ups. There's still the great, I, I just wish there were more stages. I really, really just wish that there were more stages. But overall, Pikmin 4 is incredible. It's almost so close to being the best game in the series. It's still Highly, highly recommended. Another great Switch game in 2023. But there's just one or two small little hiccups that I feel like, literally, September Direct comes, we get an update announced, that's it. It's the best Pikmin game, hands down. It is so much fun, and I can't wait to dive back in and strategize and collect even more than I already have. But yeah, that's going to wrap it for today's video review of Pikmin 4. Keep yourselves cornered for more content just like this in the coming weeks. And I will see you guys on the next one later.